Welcome to Crimes of Our Times Live. I'm filmmaker and author John Borowski. You may have seen my works on screen, such as H.H. H. Holmes, America's First Serial Killer, Serial Killer Culture, or in books such as The Ed Gein File and Dahmer's Confession. I am proud and happy and ecstatic today to have my fellow convention friends on, my co-hosts on today's show, actor John Dugan, Prop Master Collector James Azriel of the HISPA and Donnie Weimer of Killer Culture Shop, Creator Extraordinaire. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you having us Thanks, on. John. <laughs> Thank you. And so yeah. let's let's start with John. You know, John, I always found it interesting that you played Grandpa in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You know, there's that whole with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there's the entire Ed Gein connection that it was Lucy based on Ed Gein because Leatherface, of course, would wear, you know, skins made of masks, which harken back to Ed Gein, which is what he would do with his victims. You know, and I'm not sure many people know this was one of Gein's last victims. So what he was going to do, he was going to wear her skin. This was hanging in his barn. If he... Can you move to your left a bit? Can you move it this to way? your left? Your other left. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this way. <laughs> right, there, right there. Right <laughs> there. Had he, uh, had he, like, had sex with her? No, he had killed her. You know, he murdered, he shot her, and, you know, brought her back to his house in his truck, and then this they found hanging in the barn. And he was going to wear her skin. Yeah, he probably loved him cold enough. Yeah, you know, he probably, you know, Gene <laughs> loved him cold, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's that Wisconsin, you know, weather, man. That, you, know, you gotta. That's what I think. I think. It, I think. <laughs> I think the the what? Yeah, hey, right. I think the Midwest cold and the yeah, LA heat, know. right? <laughs> <laughs> but this is what John looked uh, like. Oh, geez, I'm getting. Yeah. So this is what John looked like. Yeah, like the hell out of me as a kid. <laughs> you know, but. Interesting, John. Kind of like Max von Sydow in The Exorcist. They aged you. You were young. Talk about that. I was 20 years old. Uh, and uh, <laughs> my brother-in-law wrote it. So, <laughs> you know, I was an actor. He, he, you know, he's a writer. And uh, I was doing a, uh, a children's play, Saga. There's no O in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> At the Goodman Theater. And um, he called me up and asked me if I was crazy. You know, I said, sure. So he told me about this. So I quit the play and, and headed to Texas. And <laughs> uh, part of it was because my sister, you know, held his feet to the fire and said, if you don't give my brother a part in this movie, I'll kill you. <laughs> And I think the other part is that I, they wanted somebody really small. And hell, I was small. Somebody who couldn't complain about the makeup process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was 20 years old. And I, you know, I went and I, I went down to the producer. This just, just oh, I couldn't stand her. But, and she couldn't stand me, but whatever. <laughs> And to tell her I was, to, you know, give her my notice, and she asked me about it. <laughs> and I told her what the role was like, and she said, "She was this old Russian woman. I'm not, I'm not going to try to do her, her <laughs> accent." But she had one eye that went that way, and it was a little, it was always a little like a little drooly yellow coffee oh, coming out of it, you know. <laughs> But we're really famous uh, theater family from Russia and all this shit. So, so she said, Roddy McDowell would never have done Planet if he had not been an established actor first. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, two weeks later, I was in Austin. <laughs> James might agree. You might have some props from that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure he's been picked clean if he does. <laughs> but, you know, and so this is a show, you know, about conventions. And that's the thing that we've all been at conventions before, you know, and I wanted to throw it, you know, about 
Yeah, only a couple. About a week or two ago, I was in a Target walking in Target with this shirt on. And out of the blue, you know, I'm doing my thing, mask on, get my stuff. Some guy is like, great shirt, dude. I'm like, oh, thanks. But I'm, this is what, you know, when you have friends like Donnie that create stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, <laughs> cool stuff. So, you know, Donnie, I want to talk about that, like the inspiration um, for your creations. You know, Donnie creates, you know, some other great stuff, too. I mean, of course, this is a standard, you know, of mine. Can't imagine why you'd be a fan of that one. Yeah, well, yeah <laughs> right? You like that? John likes that one. We need a shirt for John in that size. John Dugan and that. Yeah, we, we can hook you up, Grandpa, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I am. <laughs> well, I've done art and stuff like you know forever but uh what got me started in true crime is so I'm in Union City Indiana and Jim Jones was like 20 miles down the road so when I grew up hearing about the Kool-Aid man and all that you know that's kind of what got my gears turning initially when I was a little little tiny kid you know and I've just always been fascinated with that just took me a second, the Kool-Aid man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. right. Well, and that's yeah. the thing. You oh, know, the flavor aid man, if you want to be uh, super <laughs> anal about it, the flavor aid yeah. man. Flavor aid, I know. Oh, yeah, my God, flavor-aid. I love flavor aid. <laughs> that's all we had. Oh, wow, yeah. As long as you didn't take it from yeah. Jim Jones, James, you're fine. But, wow. but that's interesting, you know. I mean, yeah. when we're kids, we yeah. kind of hear about these true crime yeah. stories, you know, and it's interesting that, you know, Donnie, you'd gotten kind of into it. Hey, John, how are you? He's back. I, I fell off or something. Who's the Kool-Aid man? <laughs> we were talking about Jim Jones. Oh! Yeah, he wants some listening. Because Donnie, I love that. Yeah. That's great. Uh, yeah, that's, that's so what fun. happens when you drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> we lost Donnie. See, I don't know. All right. But yeah, that's it. This is what happens when you drink the Kool-Aid. But until Donnie comes back, right. James, talk, talk about a little about what you do with your props, you know. <laughs> what, a, what a segue there. Um, yeah. So, yes, uh, I run the HSPPA, the Horror and Sci-Fi Prop Preservation Association. Look at that plug. Nice. <laughs> Uh, we are a nonprofit traveling back. museum of screen news movie props, and we go to conventions and we, sh- you know, share them with the fans, you know, so up close and, and personal. Um, oh, I wonder. Yeah. <laughs> the Howard the Duck skull. The, what do you have with you? Uh, uh, yeah. That uh, you could trust you. I, I grabbed. I love how. Now the duck probably forty times my daughter had on video. Oh, it was so, so fun. I know it, it gets fun. it gets a lot of hate, but man, that was a fun movie. And 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 being oh, a kid I loved it. that time, yeah, it was just it was um and and I don't know. I mean, it was star, Lucasfilm. So <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And, um, God damn. <laughs> okay, we have we have yeah. a question for Grandpa. Was Paul Partain a pain in the ass on set like his character Franklin? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Paul. Not to me. Paul was the first guy I met the first day I arrived there, right off the plane. I've been on the fucking the. Um, what do they call it? The Red Eye from Chicago to Austin. And uh, I'd missed connections in Dallas. <clears throat> yeah, it was a whole... Anyway, <laughs> I got there at 7 in the morning. I got there like an hour late or something. And uh, it picked me up and said, do you want to go to your apartment? Uh, we have a place for you. Or, and, or do you want to get some sleep? Or... You know, everything's setting up right now. You want to go out to a location. I said, I'll go to the location. And we were filming at the um, the old vacant farmhouse that was supposed to be uh, uh, Franklin and, 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 and Sally's uh, grandparent, grandparents' house. And... Uh, by the time we got there, it was probably 8.30 in the morning or something from the airport. And <laughs> they were setting up 
at that point, they were setting up a bunch of uh, dolly track uh, out in the, you know, out, an out, for an outdoor tracking shot. And uh, Paul <laughs> was sitting in his wheelchair all by himself, and he had, he had set up, <laughs> oh, God, I love Paul Martin. He set up a like, conversation circle <laughs> around <laughs> with golden long chairs, and nobody was sitting in them. <laughs> and he had this huge white black convertible, red leather interior, and fins. Seven really long, pointy fins. So, like, if, if you were happen to be riding a bicycle behind him and you hit the brakes, you're a fucking dead man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he right away he jumped on, you know, he didn't get up, <laughs> but he was like, Hey, <laughs> how y'all doing? Because <laughs> nobody would talk to him. <laughs> his fellow actors and people who actually actually had to act with he never broke character mm. uh, and he told me uh, mm. later on that he was afraid if he if he dropped character he he couldn't get frank on back he had worked so hard he was he was a, a sort of a method actor kind of dude you know <laughs> so he was a pain and, <laughs> 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 under, under the guise of character, he had the trunk open on, on his giant, like you know, he may as well have had like long horns on the hood, but he didn't. But he was, you know, and uh, he says, Side along over here, part and grab yourself a drink. And he had the, he had the trunk open uh, on his car, and it was a huge cooler, was all loaded with Coca Cola and Budweiser. <laughs> I've been on plane all night, and I thought, hell, I grabbed a Budweiser and sat down with him, nice. and, and and we became fast friends. You know, I adore him, uh, but everybody who actually had scenes with him and all that shit didn't know until they saw him after the production was over what a nice guy he was. Yeah. They just thought he was an irritating <laughs> dick. <laughs> because it was his character. Oh, my God, that's great. <laughs> I love that. I just love that. But Donnie, show us some more of your stuff. You know, dude, yeah. Donnie, you make and, and, you make cups and don't, stickers and what? <laughs> don't don't leave us again. Yeah, yeah. A... You, yeah I don't know what happened. I don't know what we were I'm afraid. Doing, guys. This is my you first left. time using yeah. a fucking webcam. I'm an old man. Yeah, no. So this is my newest hat released today. Super expensive. <laughs> for... Goes well with are into that type of thing. Yeah, look, Literally Jesus. just put on the website today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, the shirt James is wearing there, you can also get that yeah, on my, my website, killerculture.com. The shirt that John's wearing That's there, true. you can also get that on my website. Oh, John's wearing toe tag. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah. We love Fred. Shout out. You we love Fred. You cannot get that Vogel. on killerculture.com. <laughs> Fred Vogel saved my life in Texas. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's insane. Was Buck, he wanted me to go. This background used to smoke before they removed half my jaw. <laughs> but stand outside smoking and drinking at a convention. And uh, uh, there was a guy who had been just at my table forever that afternoon. And he said, you know, my, my brother really wants an autograph, but he can't get here in time. And I said, well, I'm probably going to go up, take a shower, change his shirt, and hit the bar. If you bring him in, you know, I'll sign something for him. Nice. So he did that. And then I was outside smoking. And uh, he came back, you know, a couple hours later, and he was just shit-faced. And he wanted me to come <laughs> to a party in his uh, hotel room. Hey, man. I said, no, that's okay, you know. And uh, he went, thanks, man. Now I know what a vagina looks like. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> now I know what a vagina looks like. 
just fuck away from him. And I was talking to Fred. You know, Fred. Oh, bad timing. <laughs> oh, he's oh, gone. No. Oh, mid story. <laughs> oh, All right, okay. we'll, we'll, fill, we'll come right back to him. We'll get back. Because I'm not going to be back what the fuck I'm doing. So, Donnie, what else do you have as far as your stickers and what else do you sell? We, we've seen some of your stuff. Yeah. Uh, where, where can we get them? Is the better question. Yeah. You can get those at www.killercultureshop.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be yeah, cool. You get a Bundy.com. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my newest man thin sticker, kind of like a play off the old misfits, you know. Uh, what what are you talking about, Eric? What's a Rocky Horror prop? Sorry to cut in there, but <laughs> I just no, saw that don't. question pop up. Yeah, keep showing us what you make there, yeah. Donnie. And you, what's yeah. that pogo behind you? Yeah, mm. yeah, you. Oh, over here. <laughs> okay, man. Wow. Jeff Bertrand. It's a wood cutout painted. A good buddy of mine's named Jeff Bertrand. Amazing, amazing, amazing artist. Like he's, I can't put into words how fucking good this dude is. He he paints on like old hacksaws and just all kinds of shit. But yeah, totally has his own style. Check him out on Instagram. He's on all the shit. I don't know what his handle is, but Jeff Bertrand. He's an artist out of Nashville. He's a really He's actually, you may have seen him before at uh, some of the oddities and curiosities, John. I don't know if you've been born. He was. He was at um, Dark History Con. Okay. The, the first time when me and you met. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I met. Yeah, because he sounds familiar. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Uh oh. Yeah, I think I hear John, coming, John back. coming back. But yeah, <laughs> if anybody needs, you know, killercultureshop.com, Donnie's got great stuff. And he's going to show us some more of what he, you know, makes in a bit here. But we're all wearing his products. And we got it. You left us, John. Which... None of it. None of us knew we were going to wear these either. We all just did. <laughs> well, I knew I was going to wear. So, yes, friend Vogel. Yeah, continue, John. Yeah. So this guy, you know, he says uh, the second, you know, the second time, you know, I said, "Excuse me," he says. Uh, I, thanks. Now I know what a vagina looks like. I said, get the fuck away from me, man. He goes, what are you going to do? Kick my ass? And I went, nope. He is. <laughs> <laughs> and Fred just kind of stepped forward and the guy fucking split. Fred's a big guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's awesome. <laughs> He's the gentlest man in the world. <laughs> That's hilarious, but, you know, and we, you know, we, and towards the end, I do want to hear, you know, some convention stories, but James, tell us what HISPA is and show us some of the things you have. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're a nonprofit traveling museum of screen news movie props. We go out to conventions all across the country <clears throat> or we did, uh, <laughs> uh we've, oh, yeah, no. we've put out three <laughs> books. John's old up in volume three there. And uh, we do that to raise money for the preservation of props where we restore them and, and everything so that we can bring them out to the shows and let people see them up close and personal. Um, some things you can even handle and, and uh, hold, take pictures with like our, our human centipede experience, um, which is a fan favorite. <laughs> yeah, bye. yeah. There's the, the bike from yeah. Jack Frost and and John asked me now, what, for a few hey, items. James, yeah. James, what is the <laughs> the human centipede experience? Is it like that? <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> John, John, yeah. John, you don't have <laughs> John, do you you don't by chance have volume one I do. handy, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Could you flip to the back to the human centipede experience photos? <laughs> so we have uh, a couple of the outfits and harnesses from the human centipede uh, part three, the prisoner outfits. And we have them on mannequins that are on their all fours and harnessed together. And we have a extra harness where you can get in 
and uh, be part of the human centipede and take your photo. Um, so we, oh, yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> we, we've, there's, a, there's only one, there's only one living person yes. in there at a time. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Lame. well, I mean, we, we only have one, one harness, but we, we've had some, some people uh, like feed on the front end while their, their friends were in the back. Um, <laughs> uh, I, one of the Stoska sisters uh, partook at a New Jersey uh, horror con last year. Uh, I don't doubt yeah. that. At all. <laughs> um, uh, Lori, I, Lori has, Holden's has, uh, boyfriend did it uh, to her chagrin, which was it was. How about Lawrence? Yeah. Has Lawrence ever been? Have you ever been in a town with Lawrence when you whipped that baby out? Do, Lawrence Harvey. Do what? Ever Lawrence when you did that? Was I ever? ever has he ever? Seen, has he ever seen that thing? Oh, that, Lawrence! That Lawrence! No, no, we've we've never done a show with Lawrence. Yeah. Oh my God! No. He's one of the guys I've ever met on the road. Yeah. the uh, The only one was um, uh, uh, what's his name? He was in the picture that you showed. Jeff. Oh, the actor. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, was it Bardo? He was. He was. Robert um, Bardo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert uh, uh, Lasardo. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this, uh, he was in part three. So, dude. yeah. So he he's that's the true. only uh, centipede actor that's. Um, yeah, he's a super he, nice uh, guy. He took a pose with it. He refused to be part of it, though. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> he, he, he did a pose at the front end of it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. now, what is? Um, it's a fun picture. You yeah. also own Spooky Swirls, James. Yeah, yeah. But now um, is that? Are you? Is, <laughs> it'll be open eventually. Are you doing deliveries or anything? But yeah. Oh, so, Spooky Swirls, uh, it, it came out of um, HISPA, out of uh, the HSPPA. It's a uh, when when we start to expand to the East Coast and the West Coast. Uh, I have curators all across the country that that helped me with this. And uh, Chris Zalowski was out in the West Coast, and she was starting to kind of uh, take over to do to launch like the West Coast area, so that we could hit Vegas and LA and things like that. Well, she and her wife are amazing gluten-free pastry chefs, and when we went out there to do uh, Mad Monster uh, in 2018, they made me all these cupcakes. Uh, with Jason, with little bloody machetes that were all edible, and, and it was just absolutely amazing. And my entire drive home back to Chicago, <laughs> I had nothing to do but to figure out a business plan and then think through this through. <laughs> so I got home, put it together, pitched it to him, and we opened up Spookies along with another HSPPA curator, Ernesto. Um, so outside of Phoenix, there's a bakery, Spooky Swirls, where a gluten free. Um, horror and uh bakery with a museum of screen use movie props inside however we are shut down because of all of this um to the high risks involved for um for both them and our clientele all being mainly immune compromised like we we just can't open and we tried that curbside thing at the very beginning but it, it was costing us more to be open than than to be closed so we're we're hoping to implement something going into june as uh as things are are getting a little better but you know we're 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 watching like the cdc versus you know what the governors decide <laughs> are, are best for their wives beauty salons that they own it's it's crazy Not that I'm, it's hey, weird. Man. Yeah. Once you get reopened, will you be doing uh, like uh, mail order goodies or anything? Uh, we <laughs> so uh, last year I was uh, it just aired, but I was I was on a, a, a TV show called Collector's Call with uh, um, Lisa Whitechell Blair from Facts of Life hosting, and the producers found out you know mm -hmm. about Spooky Swirls and they wanted us <laughs> wanted them to make her something. Uh, but we shot here in Chicago, so it wasn't that doable. They made a cookie, 
of the Facts of Life logo, and we had to overnight it to Chicago, and it was like ninety dollars in shipping. So, yeah, yeah, for a cookie. So that's why we that's why we don't that's, that's why we don't ship because uh, <laughs> I, I have two sister in laws yeah. who have celiac. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's something that we we want to be able to to do it's just really difficult just on keeping it fresh cost effective and you know design like like the creations can't be shipped which <laughs> you know yeah um yeah saying. but we we're we are expanding are different parts so you know but yeah yeah, we'll, we'll yeah but you know and that's <laughs> that you know, one of the reasons why I created this show, especially for, you know, not just crime killers, but, you know, oddities and horror and everything. So, you know, I could have people on like this because we all know, you know, we're all, you know, independent artists and we're all doing our own thing. So, you know, look up everyone's works, John Dugan and, you know, Hispa and Killer Culture Shop and, you know, help us out and buy products, you know. And Donnie, what's your best seller, you know? And I talk about the celebs I've seen with your stuff on. How does that happen? <laughs> um, fucking dumb luck, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, my, my biggest seller is yeah. is this hat yeah. and that shirt for sure. Yeah, I love that. Uh, Ma Manson has always man. done well selling for everybody but himself. Rob Zombie, Rob Zombie. Yeah, I saw Rob Zombie. Zombie. Right. What rock in your hat? Yeah. And then um, a comedian. Yeah, but that was it. Was such a crazy, like such a surreal fucking thing because um, I weaseled my way to get in front of him in Fort Wayne. <laughs> Gave him this bag of shit. I was like, hey, you know, I hope you, I think you might like this stuff. If you don't, pass it along to someone that you, you know, that you think would or whatever. Literally the very next day, I look on his Instagram and he's got a picture of him wearing that hat I just gave him on Instagram. That's Fuck! That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh, Rob Zombie. Yeah. Rob. Yeah, yeah. But that's, that's definitely by far my favorite seller. And that was actually the, this was the first, um, true crime logo that I did and I did it on a whim I was printing shirts for a music festival that I prom promote and this was years ago before I even started the company and I'm I made this just for myself I just was gonna make nice. one hat just for myself because I wanted it and here we are fast forward a few years later and I've sold that's hundreds how of it hats. happens though yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it does you yeah. know I mean and I think that's when we first met Donnie at the dark history and horror convention yeah yeah, yeah, that was when we first met. But so, so I made this first hat of my own, and I had so many people ask me where to buy it. I started selling them on Etsy. Etsy kicked me <laughs> off a few times for glorifying violence, even though you can put in Charles Manson, Ted Bundy, anyone on there. Your your, your hat says family. Where's yeah? The, where's the, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> I don't, just to be clear. I'm, I'm not trying to. I and you know. People are going to say whatever, but I'm literally not trying to glorify them. It's, it you know, that. this is fucking pop culture. It is. These people are pop culture now. It's not like uh, everyone knows who Charles Manson and everyone knows who Ted Bundy is. That's why every fucking channel and Netflix and everything else, why filmmakers like you exist, because people are genuinely interested in this well, shit. Of course, there's also the people that actually do worship them and, you know, ladies that would pop yeah, Ted, but, Ted Bundy but, and all that. To be fair, on, I mean, these, that's, large, can be said about the non the uh, the fictional ones too i mean there's you know and uh, oh yeah which are sure. based on on it for all sure. so it, it all goes together that's uh, what were you saying john yeah yeah those uh don't those like free charlie people kind of <laughs> yeah they can be scary because they're intense <laughs> are, are they done now <laughs> yeah. right like, like <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's free now. <laughs> yeah. he's never gonna get. Yeah. all that. Yeah, free Charlie. You know, I mean, people just <laughs> love Charlie, and they were like, free yep. Charlie. Well, he didn't. Who's the? I think people uh, will. No, yep, made that yeah. clear back during the trial. You know, 1969. <laughs> but yeah. 
that's but but you know like you said 69 that was you know how many years ago and people still he's just, like 25 you know. miles from the reform school where he oh, lived wow. <laughs> you know um, when, yeah but you're right you, i lived in brazil Indiana, and and he he was a teenager in reform school what well, they used to call them reform schools like <laughs> were we were we Terre Haute. Oh. <laughs> so it wasn't it was let's see Okay, so last Dark History and Horror Convention was 2019. I think we all maybe met at the 2018 one, or I met Donnie at the 2018 one. I, but I, I don't know if we were all there. Yeah, for sure. At the 2018. I, I, I was only at the very first one. Okay, but I think John was. I know John was there because I took pictures with him. The one in Urbana. Yeah. At you, yeah, if it was in Champaign, yeah, Illinois, yeah. that was the one. And I want, and I want everybody to, t we, we, we sat, yes, yeah, and I want everyone to tell like a convention story. I'll start with one, <laughs> like you know, think of one while I'm telling this one. And this one has to do with the convention that John and I were at, and Donnie was at, and it was the dark history. You better not be here. You better I not am, be about to tell the story one. that I was going to tell. Don't think of another one. <laughs> that's why. That's why he said I'm going to go first. Is. Continue. So, I digress. <laughs> they at this convention, they had a Michael and Jackson impersonator. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I remember this pictures and so, conversation and if oh, anyone yeah. has this video people were recording <laughs> but they probably recorded it halfway send me the video i want to see it i wish i would have recorded it so we were yeah i know someone that had, <laughs> someone showed it to me on their phone after it happened when it was there so, so I whatever someone does, but i don't remember some... who it was i couldn't even believe red leather is my wife. <laughs> oh behind james <laughs> <laughs> what the black leather behind you oh no, that's uh, black. that's oh, oh, the Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah, you remember that, right, John? Were you there? Yeah, yeah, no. it was hilarious. So, for some reason, I guess you know, someone didn't pay the impersonator. So, the agent in front of the whole convention, she gets up and starts screaming at this guy, You better pay me, blah blah blah. And the best line I've ever heard. She says, I'm from the south side of Chicago, and that makes me a drive-by serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> we were all like. Is this a yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Many other yeah. colorful things that she said. Is this a it was crazy. She was going off the fucking is deep end. Is this thing as a drive-by serial killer? What is that? <laughs> You're stabbing out the window? <laughs> Let me drive and <laughs> stab you as I'm driving. <laughs> it was insane because you know, usually these conventions, they're, you know, they're, you know, everyone, you know, plays nice and, and they're fun. They're awesome. But, you know, when you have the things like that happen, you know, of course it was silent and everyone's like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, you could hear a pin drop in there. <laughs> That was, that was a story I was going to tell, too. So. What about you, John? Any interesting <laughs> stories from conventions? Besides oh, yeah, you did. One. You told us one. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, James? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, what can I... I can, okay, all right. Uh, I mean, there's, there's so many, but there's also, I don't know that I can tell them. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I love it. But, uh, okay, so. Take a whack at it. <laughs> so uh, we, we were doing a, a Walker Stalker convention, um, which in and of itself has quite a few stories one could tell. Um, and it was, uh, where was this? Um uh, this was Walker Stalker, New Jersey, and uh, we had the it bikes there. And um, Michael Rooker wanted to ride the bike, so we we had uh, his his agent came over and and asked if if it was okay and whatnot. But so it was cleared with with us. But what everybody saw 
was him just coming to the HSPPA booth, getting on the banana seat bike and taking off <laughs> and riding through the uh, entire convention, um, and grabbing people and, and dragging them along. Then he went and did his panel on the bike. So the entire time uh, it, it was, it was amusing as hell. Um, it, it was so much fun. There's video of, of a lot of this on, on our Facebook page. I remember that. He is. <laughs> he is. Um, so that, that's, yes, you got that. <laughs> that's, that's one of the fun ones. <laughs> you know? hey, I'm live from Chicago right now. I, 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 I live in, you know, talk about a horror film, you know, my zip code is the most affected <laughs> neighborhood in Chicago. So I, I'm living in a horror film. Yeah. Well, don't don't you be. I'm Rogers Park. Where do you live? Now? I don't. I, I used to live at 1334. Yep, that's Green. probably a couple miles away from me, a mile or two. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest apartment it stretched a half a mile. It was. It went back to when uh, people used to. I think I don't know if they owned their apartments or something. But there were maid quarters, and, and it was old, and it went from the street yep. to Huge the alley, places. essentially. And there were there were one, one, two, three. Bed, there were three bathrooms, four bedrooms, a maid's quarters, <laughs> and uh, there was one of those uh, ice boxes that just hung off uh, off the back of the kitchen wall. Yep. For in the winter time, you know. But the living room was so far. But my my share my shares of rent, John, John, and Donnie, was forty four dollars wow. a month. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that was so fucking cheap. You know, you can't even get TV and, for that. <laughs> and it was on <laughs> <laughs> you know, was off the kitchen. I had my own little bathroom with my own shower and all that shit. But we would have arguments. <laughs> the kitchen was so far away from the living room, we'd be watching <laughs> TV. And the commercial come on and like, okay, it's your turn to get beer. We were talking to the refrigerator, it was like, oh, come on, man, didn't I go to the last? You know? <laughs> I know I was living there. <laughs> I heard somebody's dog ate the entire bed. <laughs> they have huge, they really have huge apartments here in the city. Huge, you know. It's, if you find them. Well, yeah, well, and now they're, you know, exorbitantly expensive, you know. I mean, you know, as, as somebody, you know, in the business you know, kind of selling serial killer stuff. Have you gotten any flack over this stuff, Donnie? I mean, you go to horror conventions, and and that's great. You know, as long as it's not yeah, a steampunk okay. convention. Yeah, here, here, yeah, here's a story for you. You want to do a convention story? So I'm in uh, Kansas City at the Oddities and Curiosities Expo, which, by the way, anyone, I cannot recommend that convention or expo more. Like, they're, they're, it's an amazing people, amazing. Oh, it is, it is, it's, it's, yeah, like it's so well run. They're just great people, great people. So when they get back on the road, everyone go fucking check them out when they come to your town. They will be all over the country. I'll be at most of them, 90% of them, if they ever get to happen. But anyway, so Kansas City, this lady comes walking up, and I, I, like, I can see that she is like, Seriously, giving me the stink eye, you know what I mean? Comes up, saying, "Why would you do this?" It's like, excuse me, why would you be glorifying these that. people? <laughs> I'm like screaming, like mad, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not, you know, look at them. These are basically memes on a fucking T-shirt, you know. Well, it really fucking pisses the line. Like at this point, she's it's really fucking like yelling hey, at Dottie, me. You know what I mean? Can I? What what, what show was this at? This is at the oddities. So uh, the so oddities she's, she's at a City show that's year. full of taxidermy and, and other yeah. yeah, babies and jokes. Well, right. This is the most offensive you know I mean? yeah. thing there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Right. I just yeah, want to make course. sure I was following that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. She, yeah. 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 So she yeah. And like, and like starts screaming at me and I'm like, lady, you need to calm down. And her husband or boyfriend or whatever, stand there beside him and beside her. And he's just got this look of horror on his face, you know, like, you know what I mean? Oh, like man. he was so fucking embarrassed. And I finally told him, I said, well, you know what? There's a hundred other vendors here. If you don't like what you see here, you better get the fuck on down the road. You know what I mean? And uh, like, he was shocked, like offended. Like you'd have thought I punched her in the fucking face or something. (laughs) But that that, that was the most, I mean, I've had times where people walk by and kind of, you know, never say anything directly to me, but say, I hear them say something to each other. Like, oh my God, I can't believe they do that. Oh, that's so gross. I get the gross one a lot about the human centipede. That's it. When they see this, a lot of people will tend to get I can't imagine. That, you know. I love that. I love it. <laughs> but I can almost tell, a lot of times I can tell just as they're walking into the booth, just by the look on someone's face. Yeah, it's so interesting. Like James said, you know, the, the especially the Oddities and Curiosities Expo, phenomenal. Shout out to them. They're great. But, you know, they have bones and, like James said, you know, cow fetuses in jars. But, you know, a T-shirt with, like, mm-hmm. a black and white image of Manson is more offensive than anything they may have there, which is, like. You know, it's, yeah, I, I get, the, I get that it. with the props, too. You know, not uh, human centipede is kind of its own beast you know so well, you I, have, I don't even you have a that. prototype yeah, yeah, james sure. right from a movie <laughs> well <laughs> yeah and and it's it's funny that this topic came up because this wasn't planned but it's a perfect segue um i don't bring this out that much for the fact of it offending people and also there's a lot more kids at these shows nowadays but this is uh the prototype lust device from seven um <laughs> oh, so you can, oh yeah. shit, man. Yeah. The thing oh my god, that's so disturbing. You know, that's yeah, crazy. remember? <laughs> oh, god, was... yeah. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, this this was just one of the, the pre designed phases Ow. before they made it. That was yeah. you know, I would say what it See? was yeah. that was disturbing as hell to me. And whoever the yeah. actor was it had a Leland Orser, wasn't that him? I think. Yeah, I think it was him. I'm not sure. It was great. Oh, I. It's it's kind of it's. I'm in like an insane encyclopedia up here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how do you know that? I mean, he was so good. He was great. <laughs> he was all over him. Hey, baby. Yeah, that was great. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. Oh my you... God. Jeez, man, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but the question is, this, does James this... wear that? <laughs> Walk around his house. <laughs> yeah. It's a. It's it's got a got a little <laughs> little slot that it goes right. Uh, so. <laughs> um. The, <laughs> so, so somebody had mentioned jack frost and i i don't have the head here to like show but you had shown it on on the screen john um and it reminds me so i have a i have a great story but it's not from a con it's after leaving a con um when i was coming home from phoenix um the first time okay. i I have a full trailer of, of items and I am driving a, a U-Haul pickup truck um, with with the, the HISPA trailer attached to it. And I'm traveling the drug corridor of America. So through Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> build, building up here for you. So coming through Oklahoma. Uh, I, I've been on the road I, at this point. It was around 14 hours. I have a weird issue with public restrooms. So the only thing I've had the entire day is Red Bull. So I am, I am, you know, at the wheel, it's, it's dusk and, and there's a cop at my door because <laughs> my trailer, I guess, went over the line as I came onto an on-ramp. Um, but I expected to get pulled over 
having what I, I had. So I knew I was going to get searched. Something was going to go down. So I decided to beat the, uh, the odds and I just start telling the cop what I do. And he's like, what? <laughs> um, I'm like, so what, what, what's one of your favorite movies? You know, like horror. He's like, Oh, you know, resident evil is, is pretty cool. I'm like, really? <laughs> you want to see something? I have the 10 foot ax uh, that the ax man has. So this 10 foot, uh, around 200 pound metal axe oh, right <laughs> so i walk to the side of the trailer i open this door and here's this <laughs> this axe with blood running down it and everything and his eyes light up like whoa that's fucking awesome like he wants to see more so we open the back of the doors and i pull out jack frost head you know and and, and start showing him stuff so now picture yourself cruising down the the highway whatever that is a uh, like 45 or something near oklahoma city um another squad car had shown up other cops had come out <laughs> and here's this guy with a giant snowman head and multiple cops standing around on the side of the road <laughs> and <laughs> just this this image so they uh they enjoyed it thoroughly and 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 i went on my way but yeah that was <laughs> That was one of the more fun things, you know, because the the next step would have been empty out the the car because there there was stuff like RoboCop's gun and whatnot in there, and, and it could have gotten really bad. I thought you were going to tell <laughs> the know? story of <laughs> yeah. when your props fell out. Oh no, that never one. happened, John. That never happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I must have been misunderstood. I must have misunderstood. That never, that never happened, <laughs> John. I must have misunderstood. You're smoke. You're smoking that legal wacky right. too much now. You know what? That's... I mu- I might have been thinking of the time when I jumped out of a moving van when I was at a. On a oh, and, and hit your head. That's you know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe that's why. You know. <laughs> Had that, uh, Jack Frost said completely packed. You know, right? And you would have got right. away. And, and <laughs> I actually I got pulled over again <laughs> this past December uh, after I did a, a, a exhibit change at Spookies, but this time it was in Kansas, <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm still annoyed at this. It was a speed trap because it drops from like 75 to 30 in in a few minutes, right? But same ordeal, you know, it's a U-Haul van and drug quarter, but whatever. So this time I have bodies in the back of the van and <laughs> covered in, in sheets <laughs> and a plethora of guns. And <laughs> when I, they're all rubber, but <laughs> they don't necessarily look at when you when you're shining that light in there. So <laughs> um Knowing if I got pulled over, I, I left all the guns right at the back of the door so that if we had to go through things, we could. So, yeah, you know, he pulls me over. Um, are you guys familiar with the game Cards Against Humanity? Yeah. Or No, no, I'm sorry. Exploding Kittens. I don't know. I haven't played that one. <sighs> okay. Exploding mm-hmm. Kittens. Yeah. There's there's you play these different cards, weird things, whatever. But there's this one card called the um, uh, Bag of Dicks Man. And he's <laughs> and he he's at least nobody he's the called cl- John that, right? <laughs> right. He's he's the he's the collector of of collecting, and he collects dildos, and he he walks around with with a with a dildo hat, and he and he has a fanny pack, and, and the little dildos. In it. So what? So whatever this this card does, it, it's it's hilarious. So. Chris and, and Lola, the the partners and chefs at Spookies for Christmas, are like, what do we get somebody that has everything? So they made, and I found this card freaking hilarious. So they made me a giant plush bag of dicks, man, complete with, and it's <laughs> it was too giant to ever ship or, or to to take on an airplane or whatever. So he rode co-pilot with me all the way home in the passenger side. So this cop comes up <laughs> to the, the side of the van with with bag of dicks man sitting in the passenger seat, he's got this smile on his face with this this 11 inch dildo on his head and he's just like (laughs) and and he looks at me he's like um so what are you doing i'm like well i own a bakery in phoenix (laughs) and 
and I'm and I'm driving home with a bunch of movie props, and he's just looking at this thing and, and stuff in the back, and he's like, "Like, do you want to see?" <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I did it. Well, no, I I did. I I showed him a Disney prop and 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 mentioned the uh, the guns were in there. And he's like, "No, nah, it's okay. Just yeah, he probably yeah, wasn't thinking that down. was creepy yeah. at all. Here's Dodo Man. Let me show you some Disney stuff now. Yeah. A, a guy like me owns a bakery, right? With with big yeah. dicks yeah. and bodies sure in the back. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, he didn't say a word. <laughs> and I would. <laughs> I, I was not offering up any information on it either. I just, but we're talking across it, which is even funnier, you know. So, oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, that was. Oh, uh, so yeah, I've I, those, those. I think are the top of my my convention stories. What about There's you, John? Ones that. I would love to share, but I can't. <laughs> Do you have any any weird story, John, on the convention? You have a lot of I have some things you have a lot yeah. of fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it, it's yeah. definitely crazy. But tell us, you know, I mean, Donnie, we'll right. go we'll go through everyone, at least like two of your favorite like conventions or expos. Um well by far Oddities and Curiosities Expo, like I said. Amazing people, amazing vendors, amazing attendees. Ninety-nine point nine 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 percent, except for that one bitch in Kansas City. Um, <laughs> great show, and they they tour all over the country. Like, you know, there's at least one or two a month. I, I was going to do before, you know, the fucking world started coming to an end. I was doing wow. eighteen or nineteen shows with them this year, and yeah. I wasn't even doing one of them. Wow. <laughs> and then, um, honestly, the Dark History and Horror Con. I know it's a smaller con, but but I really dig the vibe, really good people. I like what he's trying to do, and I, I'd really like to see that, yeah. that show grow. Because uh, Yeah, a my, my couple of my top favorites are Flashback Weekend here in Chicago and then the uh, Oddities and Curiosities. You know, they're great. You know, when Flashback is always like a family kind of thing. We always feel like we're family. Yep. We go there, you know, and it's just like one big, you know, we're all like literally a big family, James. So, yeah, I, flashback yeah. is always at the top of my list. They're the first ones that that embraced HSPPA and, uh, I mean, like truly get what we do and use it as part of what they're they're promoting and doing. That they they get the whole point of it and and just love it. So yeah, I mean, flashback is is absolute family. Um, I I, I get some flack for this one, um, but Walker Stalker, uh. And it, it's gone now, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, we had a lot of love, a lot of support from the people that ran it. Um, not just at the top, but I mean the people that that truly run it. You know, the the the, the soldiers on the ground. Um, uh, they right. they embrace us, brought us uh, around uh, further. That's how we got to the East Coast and and down south and whatnot. Um, but they're gone. Um, but here in Chicago, there's, um, uh, um, oh my God, John, help me. Uh, Tim's <laughs> Chicago pop culture con. Oh yeah. Those, uh, yeah. 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 Pop culture um, con, the Halloween, yeah. the all night flea market. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're, Zerba they're, uh, experience. smaller shows, but they're, they're, they're big, uh, experience. If you will. Yeah. What about you, John? You have any favorites? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, Cinema Wasteland in Cleveland. Uh, I love that show, and you know I do it every five years because he—that's the way he run. You know he doesn't want to like overexpose. People. So uh, you're only uh, allowed to do it every five years. So I've done it three times now. Um, a oh, Pensacon, yeah, Pensacon. Um, it's just a, both of these I, I love so much uh, because they're really well organized 
him as a uh, an out of town uh, celeb or inventor, they really take care of you. There's always somebody there saying, "Is there anything that we do to help mm-hmm. you here and all that stuff?" And then my hope, my hometown show is nice. is a uh, full moon tattoo and more. Yeah, I've did that show before. That's a nice show. Yeah, I'm I'm telling you guys, um, I think it was last year or the year before was the first time I went to the Living Dead convention, you know, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, yeah, Evansville. The one at the mall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd say, you know, yeah, the yeah, most yeah. fun I ever had at a convention because you're actually in the mall where they filmed Dawn of the Dead and then they showed the movie in the mall. And you're watching the movie with the actors in the movie and the audience. It was like, I, my mind was blown. I was like, right. this is the best. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was awesome. be surreal yeah. as hell. It was a lot of fun. Okay. But before we leave, we got like four minutes. Let's go around and do your spiels, do your plugs. Where can we find your stuff, Donnie? And what do you make? Uh, I make evil, awful, and offensive merchandise. <laughs> um, you can find my stuff there. KillerCultureShop.com. All these get well. Our two of our hosts here are wearing my Love stuff. Um, <laughs> and find me on uh, Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff at Killer Culture Shop on everything. Um, and thank you very much for having me on, John. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the support that you've given no, me. You've always been awesome. Here. You know, again, just, you know, the people that I usually gravitate are people like me, you know, no attitude, you know, we're from the Midwest, you know, no ego. We just want to have fun and do our stuff, you know, and that's it. And that, that's why I gravitate to. And that's what we've got right here. And there are so many, you know, more, but you guys are awesome. You're like family to me. And James, <laughs> where do we see, find yeah, your stuff, sure. James? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're we're on all the the social medias, uh, HSPPA as well as the dot com. So um, that's the best way to to find us. Yep, there it is, HSPPA. Um, I'm going to take this moment to to virtually convention us and uh, to take a a piece that we meant to uh, unveil at at conventions this year that we haven't been able to yet. So. Here is Jason's hero machete from Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, this is this is the uh, the metal one. Um, let's see if we can do. Wow! Do a drive by. Uh, this is the one in particular, particularly from the uh, the uh, cornfield. Uh, so when he's he's slaughtering all the teens and. And chopping and wow yeah. that's awesome so, that is so yeah movie. so that that will be at, at shows as soon as we're, we're able to come out um but yeah so we wanted to to unveil something amazing on john's i podcast love that too. thank you that's awesome and you know who would have known it was so big <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's what she's <laughs> oh, John, oh. Oh. <laughs> John we're, you're on Facebook, and you know where else can people find you? <laughs> Did he freeze? Up I think he froze. Yeah. There he is. Oh, you're back. You know, yeah. around country roads in Tennessee, you might stumble across me. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> my Facebook page. I do have a folder, a folder, a, a, a album of uh, photos for sale. Mm-hmm. Cool. And you can contact. Me. Cool. And, yeah. Uh, right and you know, I do PayPal and all that stuff, and also yeah. take some of the newest films that are streaming now, which is. Uh, now I'm going blank. Uh, easy behavior. <laughs> Which is a, I really like. I'm really pleased with it. And then Rock, Paper, Scissors. Uh, which I'm very proud of my work. Uh, by uh, Victor Brooke Miller from uh, from uh, <laughs> Uh, 
Yes, look up John Dugan, J-O-H-N-D-U-G-A-N on Facebook. He's got his autographs. You could, you know, hit him up for a photo. He's oh. more than happy to autograph everything. There he is. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. We love John. Thank you, John. Uh, I, I got <laughs> Thank you, Kevin James. Well. Thank you, Thank Gotti. you. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully Thanks we'll do this brother. again you know, in a couple of months. And then, you know, hopefully we'll yeah, see anytime. each other. I miss you guys. <laughs> see you guys. Yeah, Thank be, you. Be good, brother. Thanks, Chad. Thank you, everybody. Thank Thank you. You.